Now we get another sermon about Mother's Day. Because we cannot talk enough about the mothers. However, it is also the Sunday of Thomas, which means it is still Pascha. So we have to start from Pascha and Thomas and work our way around to the mothers. So see if you like how I do it. The Gospel reading gives us this beautiful picture. And sometimes the icon shows Thomas, who missed the Lord's first revelation of himself to the apostles, and who said, if I can't put my finger in the holes in his hand and put my hand in the hole in his side, I will not believe that he is risen. The picture of Thomas seeing the Lord, reaching out and touching him. Sometimes we can be a little hard on Thomas, and sometimes the icon's title is incorrectly translated, Doubting Thomas. But the correct title is The Encounter, The Touching of Thomas. Or even better, Thomas's belief, his moment of comprehension. And with Thomas, we may see the full extent of the Lord's condescension to us. For we stand in the same place as Thomas. We have not seen the Lord with our eyes. We have not heard his voice with our ears. We have not been blessed to touch his hand and to receive healing in a visible and comprehensive way. And we too sometimes, often I dare say, struggle with doubt either intellectual doubt or even worse, the uncertainty that rests at the heart of every one of us that allows us to wander into sin, into temptation, into distraction, because we have not kept the Lord always before our eyes, always before the eyes of our heart. But may we be blessed as much as Thomas when we do see when we do hear the words of the Lord, when we are blessed to touch Him, to be touched, when we are accepted so that we may taste and see that the Lord is good as we do in Holy Communion. We always must have as the example the belief of Thomas when he is finally faced with the reality of the Lord's resurrection. May we always speak his words, my Lord and my God. May we be overwhelmed with wonder and with joy as we see the glory of God. But Thomas, he is therefore the least that we should aspire to. He is where we all begin, having not seen having not heard the glorious things of God. As we begin to listen, as we begin to pray, as we begin to understand, we stand in Thomas's shoes. But there is the other end of the spectrum. Perfect faith, absolute hope. And we see this in the mother of God. She who heard great promises, and ask questions indeed. How can this be, she says to the angel. I am not a married woman. I have not gone into a man. How can I receive a child? And she receives an answer. And having received, she says, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. What Thomas lacks, the mother of God exhibits to us in spades, for she believes, having not seen, having not touched, having not experienced the reality of the promise, she believes, she bows her head, she submits, and she trusts. And through all the long days of the pregnancy, those days of shame, as everyone looked at her and assumed what had happened. 
she retained her faith. And in all the long years, after the Lord's birth, when strange things would happen, when her son abandoned the family for three days and went into the church and was having arguments with the teachers, she spoke a word of rebuke, mildly, how could you do this to us? But when she was then rebuked in return by her son, again, she took these things. She held them in her heart. She considered them. She weighed them. She prayed over them. And she waited to see the fulfillment that she had been promised. And when the Lord was suspended on the cross, and the prophecy of Anna in the temple on the 40th day was fulfilled, that her heart too was pierced with agony and grief. Still, she trusted, and she was blessed then to see the result. Now, I had not comprehended how common this experience was until I became a father and began to watch the mother of my children struggle too with doubt and uncertainty, knowing the grave responsibility of raising good and faithful and pious children and having no guarantee of the result no guarantee even of the right way to proceed. And truly we must recognize that for any mother, the burden that Panahia bore, the burden of the mother of God, is a familiar one. Every mother knows the uncertainty and the fear and the doubt and yet they still care for us. They still love us. They still pour themselves out for us. And always, 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 they still pray for us. Looking to God and placing in His hands the result of the work of child raising. And therefore, for us today, as we stand in Thomas' shoes, looking to the face of the Lord, doubting, because we have not seen, we have not touched, we have not heard, if we seek to grow from that one extreme of doubtful belief to the perfect faith, exemplified by Panagia. We can have no better example than our own mothers who with faith and hope and love, however many years ago we were born, struck out into an ocean of uncertainty with only the Lord and their love, the love that the Lord had placed in their heart as an anchor and a compass to guide them to the destination. For the mothers, look to Panagia as an example and as an encouragement that the harbor is there. It is safe and secure, and your work is blessed. But to the rest of us who aren't mothers, today we look to all the mothers, for they show us the way of faith, the way of prayer, the way of life, the way of salvation. May we be blessed to follow them today through their prayers and the prayers of the Holy Theotokos and of all the saints. Amen. Please rise and we will conclude the Divine Liturgy.